Christian, not only as Christians, but also as mature Christians, and finding confidence, and first in the Bible, that you have the Word of God, and secondly, the, the greatest thing in my life for understanding God's Word was when I learned what it meant to rightly divide the Word of Truth. It opens up the Bible to you if you understand that there are divisions in that book. Just as God had various covenant agreements throughout uh, the ages, he had an agreement with Adam and Eve. He told them, if they, of all the trees of the garden, thou mayest freely eat except for the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. The knowledge of the tree that's in the midst of the garden, you may not eat, for in the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. One prohibition. God had, had uh, a different set of rules as people came along. The Bible says Abraham believed God and God counted it unto him for righteousness. So there's divisions. And then God gave the children of Israel the, the Ten Commandments. And to the Jew, he gave the law. And he told the Jew, if you keep that law and the, the ordinances and the sacrifices that are instituted with that law, I'll give you my righteousness. And when you're reading those passages that deal with those various covenants, you look, look at Noah. Uh, Noah was called a preacher of righteousness, and he did what God told him to build an ark to the saving of his house, and he did what God told him to do. And if you learn that there are divisions, God has different covenant agreements with different folks throughout the ages. Uh, if you don't understand that, you'll always be confused over passages of scripture you'll be reading something that was directed to the Jew under the law and when you try, try to apply it to the covenant that God has with a church under grace it'll mess you up it'll confuse you and it'll keep you from growing in the word now in the Old Testament in the book of Nehemiah in 8 Nehemiah 8.8 8, it says this and it's the same principle he said, so they read in the book of, they read in the book, in the law of God distinctly. And they gave the sense, and they caused them to understand the reading. My, my. So they read, they, they read every word. We learn about that Bible that, that every word is important. For all the words of God are pure words, the Bible says. As silver tried in a furnace of earth and purified seven times. Thou shalt keep them, O Lord. Thou shalt preserve them, O Lord. Thou shalt keep them from this generation forever. So every word of God is pure. That's why we don't mess with the book. So if you can take confidence in that book and then learn to rightly divide it, you're going to learn some Bible. You're not going to get confused over your salvation. You're not going to worry whether you can lose your salvation or not. You're not going to be concerned over a lot of things if you want you learn to rightly divide the word of truth. And we all have the same book. We all have the same book that we can draw from. And uh, I'm even careful. The study, you'll read a lot of studies and a lot of commentaries from different people, uh, brilliant people that God has shown a lot of things to. But when, when, when push comes to shove, You've got the same book that that fella had, and, and if something didn't don't ring true with what that fella told you, you stick with the book. It's the same with the various covenant agreements. The, the apostle Paul was, was the apostle to the Gentiles. He is your spokesman for the church. He's the, the, the spokesman for you and I when it comes to church doctrine. Over there in, uh, is it Romans 16 too? He said, for all the secrets of man uh, will be judged according by Jesus Christ, Paul said, according to my gospel. Wow. That's the gospel Jesus Christ gave to the apostle Paul for the church. And Paul said, that's what you're going to be judged by. You're not going to be judged by the book of Hebrews or, or the, the book of Acts or the book of Matthew. Matthew was the Lord uh, preaching the kingdom to the Jew. Be, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So if you learn to rightly divide it, you're going to have some understanding and knowledge of the book. 
2 Timothy 2, uh, 15, the Bible says to study. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So it, it appears from those verses that I read, the one in Nehemiah and the one in 2 Timothy, there are divisions in the book. And, and in Nehemiah where he said not only did they read it word for word, they read it distinctly, but then they gave the sense of it. That's the context. Who is it speaking to? Any time that you find a verse that, that causes you a, a, a little stress over perhaps your salvation or some doctrinal issue, if it contradicts what your spokesman said, if it contradicts the Pauline epistles, stick with your spokesman. Remember he said that we're going to be judged according to what he told us because God gave him, Jesus Christ appeared to to Paul on the Damascus Road and gave him the gospel to give to the church. 2 Timothy 3.16, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. 2 Peter 1.21, for the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. My, my, my. Uh, Daniel 10.21, the Bible says, but I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. So we have the truth, and there's divisions in it. It's all for you, but it's not all to you. It's profitable for you, but when it comes to your church doctrine, for, for this age, you as a member of the body of Christ, not every verse applies to you doctrinally. It can apply to you spiritually. It can apply to you practically. It can apply to you, you can look at it historically. But there's divisions in the book. And that's one of the most important things for you to grow in the knowledge of God's Word. And if you get that down, man, you've, you've, you've got the guidance of the Holy Spirit. You've, you've got uh, those Pauline epistles written not only for you, but right to you. And then you've got all those Old Testament scriptures that were written for our learning and for our admonition. You have the Jews under the law. That's not you. You have, uh, of course, the Gentiles as anyone who isn't a Jew is a Gentile. Then you have Christians in this age. And uh, the church is composed of neither Jew nor Greek but one body. Any Jew that trusts Jesus Christ, he's part of the church. And uh, uh, the scriptures that refer to the church or are pointed right at the church, that's, that's for that Jew who is now no longer considered a Jew but a member of the church, the body of Christ. Same for a Gentile. Once you trust Jesus Christ, you're part of that body. For they are neither Jew nor Gentile nor Greek, but one body. All right, you've got the tribulation saints. The church gets caught up, raptured out. And then oh, you get over in the book of Hebrews, and most of that is about the tribulation. You start applying uh, those verses to the church, and it's going to keep you more confused than ever. You'll be out there as a church member trying to endure to the end. And you're already gone. You've already been caught up. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the moment in the twink of an eye. We're, we're gone. So understanding those divisions will just open your eyes. Is the greatest thing that I ever did to open my eyes. Besides trusting Christ, that gives me the spiritual discernment. But I learned to rightly divide. I learned that there are divisions. Without, without knowing that, I was constantly, constantly looking back and forth. How, does, how can this say this here and then it says this over there? And they don't really agree because Paul says, says not by works of uh, righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saves us by the washing, regeneration, renewing the Holy Ghost. Paul says, for by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's a gift of God, not of work, lest any man should boast. And then I read over here that I've got to endure to the end. I'm, as a Christian, I'm not enduring to the end. 
I am perfected forever in Jesus Christ. My life is hid with Christ in God. So once you learn to rightly divide that book, you'll start learning some Bible. That's how it works. Give it, and the sense of it. That's the context. They read from the book of the law distinctly and they gave the sense of it. And then they caused the people to understand it. To give understanding. And you do that by comparing scripture with scripture. All right. Every doctrine of the Bible does not apply equally to each one of the groups in the Bible. Now I left out a group. There's people living during the millennial reign of Christ. That's the kingdom age. That's when Jesus Christ is here. He sets up his kingdom. And the rules are different. People no longer walk by faith. When Jesus is sitting on the throne in Jerusalem. You know why? Because he's here. They walk by sight. Not by faith. What's the song? Beautiful land where my faith is going to end in sight. They walk by faith, not, no longer by faith, but Jesus is here. And the rules change. Those who have the, keep the commandments and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. It's just different. But you'll read those verses and it'll scare a Christian who don't know how to rightly divide. And he'll try to apply that to a, a Christian in this age, to the church and he'll just stay confused about it. <clears throat> and I normally refer to these divisions as covenant agreements that God has with different groups and different ages. Uh, for example, the Bible's, Bible deals differently with Old Testament saint living under the law, the spirit-filled Christian with the indwelling Christ, the tribulation saint who must endure to the end and avoid the mark of the beast. There's a lot of Christians spending a lot of time worrying about the mark of the beast. You're not going to be here. You might see some forerunners of it. They've been talking about for years and planting the little chip in your hand. I mean, everything's getting set up uh, for the mark. But that don't happen until into the tribulation. Uh, Bible deals differently with those folks. So we see these divisions and the admonition here in 2 Timothy 2.15 to study it. And to rightly divide it. That will open your eyes to learning Bible. Be careful on studies of men. You'll, you'll find some fellow that's brilliant. And he will not improve on the same book that you have. You can read it just the same as he can. Use what he tells you. Go look at the scriptures he quotes. And writes down and, writes down and you learn from it. But you, you never... Trust a study that a man does beyond what this book says about it. We'll, you know, and, and we as, as preachers who really try to get in the book, we'll have the most interesting discussions over certain doctrinal points that there isn't a whole lot said about it. And beyond what the Word of God says, it's every man for himself. And that it's only only absolute truth we have. I... I may not see some things that you see, and you may not see some things that I see in Scripture. So what? I'm going to heaven because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. If you're saved, you're going to heaven because of the shed blood of Jesus Christ. If I've got something wrong, I, I need God to give me light on it. God may use you to give me light on something that I haven't seen in Scripture before. All right. All scripture given by inspiration of God. With that in mind, we'll learn that all scripture is written for us, but not all scripture is written to us. All right. Now, church uh, age, the age that, the age that we're living in today, and it's made up of the body of Christ. Some people refer to it as the age of grace. Well, it's, it's, it's always been grace across the board. So that's kind of a misnomer. Because Noah found grace in the eyes of God. So, it's always been grace. Ephesians 1, And had, hath put all things under his feet, our Lord's feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. 
Colossians 1.18 says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. Colossians 1.24, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, Paul speaking here, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Wow. You learn that there's division. Now that Old Testament has 39 books, Genesis uh, through Malachi, and it covered a, a, a lengthy period of time. And then Christ is born, and it starts a new era. Right now, what uh, the, the AD and a domino, AD after Christ, some say, you know. That's where we measure our, our time today. Some say the Christian era, and that's, that's those just trying to, are upset because they use the birth of Christ to determine that, that time separation. You got the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they cover approximately 33 years of a man's life, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They give various accounts uh, some will tell the same story, but, but uh, just a, a different perspective from the same story. Some will have some things, one of the Gospels has some things in it that the others didn't have. And you remember uh, Matthew, the ruler, he must do to inherit eternal life. And the Lord said, well, you've got to keep the commandments. You know the commandments. Thou shalt do no murder. In fact, it's that verse. And, is that Matthew 19 or Matthew 23, 19? Forget where it is. But that's the verse that, where the Lord interprets and defines the statute, thou shalt not kill, as meaning murder. Thou shalt not murder. He told that fellow, thou shalt do no murder. A little sidebar for those interested in the military. But then again, after the Lord speaking to the, the Jews about the kingdom in Matthew, when you get over to John, it's no longer keep the commandments. What's that about? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. What's the difference? The difference is that the book of John was not written until the Paul had already received the revelation of the church. Much later, uh, those early gospels, maybe around 50 or 60, uh, no, the, the church was revealed to Paul in about 60 AD, if I'm thinking right here. And, and then the book of John was written close to 90 AD. So he already knew about the church and knew about the church age and he knew that it was by grace through faith. That's why John is so much different. John's perspective is so much different because it's written at a much later time. And it goes from keeping the commandments to believing on Christ. Remember, and, and, and I, quote, I quoted this at the wedding yesterday that I did. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? And Jesus answered and said, this is the work of God that you believe on him whom he hath sent. He didn't say keep the commandments. If the Jews would have accepted him, he would have brought in the kingdom right then. But they rejected him. Now it turns it over. The Bible says he granted repentance to the Gentiles. We're accepted in the beloved the moment we trust Christ. Now that's a pretty clear statement. What shall we do that we might work the works of God? That's a pretty straightforward question. And the answer is very straightforward. This is the work of God. That's, that's what it takes to get to heaven. This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he has sent. That pretty much says it. As the song goes, that, that pretty much does it, don't it? Yet we'll come, we'll, we'll, we in the ch church, special preacher, you, you'll rest every little, every little thing to try to, to mean, well, it really means, you really got to do this, and you got to do, no, you don't, you got to believe. That's right. what he says, do what he says. Not what some man told you, 
thought of what he should have said. That's the simplicity of Christ. Now that's just getting you to heaven. That's not talking about service and earning crowns and all that other thing and bringing him glory. I'm just talking about getting you to heaven. You got to heaven the same way the fellow next to him, that thief next to him on the cross got to heaven by trusting in Jesus Christ. He, verily, verily, I say to you, John 5, 24, verily, verily, I say to you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation but is passed from death into life. Boy, we sure like to complicate things. I heard a preacher say, I didn't come up with this, but I like it, and I've used it. Where he said, uh, uh, said you can believe, Simon the sorcerer did. You can confess, Balaam did. You can repent, Pharaoh did. You can be baptized, Judas was. But except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. That new birth comes by believing from the heart our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For with a heart man believeth unto righteousness. Not just an intellectual assent, but a heart belief that Jesus is who he said he was. Uh, uh, I think Jeremiah, some of his teaching calls it illumination. Others refer to it as conviction. When you understand that you need a, you need a Savior. You're not going to make it on your own. You need a Savior. And you reach out to Jesus Christ. You believe that He is who He said He is. He is the one. Repentance toward God. Faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. My, my, my. Now you got the book of Acts. That's a very interesting book. If, if there's anything that will mess you up on church doctrine, it will be three books. Excuse me, more than any other, it'll be Matthew, because the Lord's dealing with the Jew about the kingdom. Remember in Matthew where the, the, the woman show, shows up for, for, for a daughter, and, and the disciples said, run her off. And the Lord tells her, hey, I'm not sent but to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The Lord told her that. That don't sound like my Lord. Well, she continued on, continued on, said, I haven't seen that kind of faith. He said, so it be it unto you, as thou wilt. Wrote her a blank check. Hmm. See, the, his message was to the house of Israel. Only when they rejected him did you and I and our progenitors, is that the right word? Bobby, is that the right word? Or does that mean the ones ahead of us? Okay, I get that. On. Our ancestors. I get a little grammar lesson. I got to look there. And then I've got another a school teacher sitting up here. I can ask her. So, book of Acts. Acts is a transitional book. You're trans, transitioning from the law unto the grace and the grace of God. And so transitional. They had the thing with the laying on the hands and all. Man, it's 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 wild. And if you try to get all your church doctrine from the book of Acts, man. Uh, It'll really mess you up. Hebrews. You're not a Hebrew. You start, you start seeing, well, well, once I'm enlightened, if I fall away, I can never get it again. You're not a Hebrew. And it'll mess you up. Stick to your spokesman when it comes to church doctrine. Doctrine that applies to you in the body of Christ. And that and I preached some on this last week. Don't be mad at those who haven't figured out how to rightly divide it. Paul told one crowd, said, you're too superstitious. He didn't say, I hate you because you're too superstitious. He said, you're too superstitious. If they've trusted Christ, they're going to heaven. They may, they may have all the rest of it all messed up. But if they've done what God told them to do as far as trusting in Jesus Christ... They're going to heaven. Maybe they do have a lot of it or most of the rest of it messed up. But one of the things in, in my mind is why I am in what I 
what we call a Bible-believing church, we're Bible believers first, we're Baptists second. I'm a Baptist because I believe they're the closest to the Scriptures. And there's about 60 or more variations of Baptist. Man, there's a ton of them. Man, there's, there's free wills, there's separate Baptists, there's... there's First, uh, you know, first Baptist, second Baptist, and crazy. So, as a Bible, I was at a funeral for Gene Shepherd, Country Music Hall of Fame member who I worked with back in the day. And I'm talking to Paul Brewster. Paul uh, sings with Ricky Skaggs, and Ricky's at the funeral, and Paul's there. And, and I told Paul I'd been pastor, and he said, what kind of church? And I said, well, we're a Baptist church. Actually, I said, actually, we're a Bible-believing Baptist church. And he said, oh, that's very different. And then he started naming preachers of some great independent Bible-believing preachers that I was familiar with. And he knew the crowd because he's a Bible-believer too. But he said, that's very different. He said, that narrows the group way down. That's, that's, and, and it's just that because we believe it's the final authority. It's the final authority in everything concerning the church. The government of the church, the uh, polity as they say, uh, everything about the church is, needs to be according to that book. It may, uh, the way we run the church may not be socially acceptable. It may not be culturally acceptable. But we want it to be acceptable to our Heavenly Father and to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what we're shooting for. Not because we think it ought to be, you know, uh, there's a lot of things I would have done much different. But I'm not in charge. I'm not in charge here. What saith the Scriptures? If there's a Scripture that says you shouldn't be doing this, we shouldn't be doing that. If we're going to call ourselves a Bible-believing church. But in order to understand this book, try to get these divisions down. That way it won't scare you to death. You, well, a man's either, if a man's lukewarm, said, I said he's neither hot nor cold, I'll spew him out of my mouth. And a Christian goes, oh my. Hey, you're part, you're bone of his bone and you're flesh of his flesh. He would have to spew himself out of his mouth if he spewed me out of his mouth. Duh. You see what I'm saying? He can't spew me out of his mouth because I'm part of him. But all that worry and all that stress and all that concern is based around not rightly dividing the word of truth. Taking a verse of scripture out of the context trying to place it in a church context where it does not fit all right now the book of acts it covers a time period uh, immediately following uh, the cross until the time of paul's missionary journeys his imprisonment in rome and it uh, covers the actions of the apostles historically It's transitional because it takes us from one time period to the next. Now, I've got a note written here. Although the entire Bible is a history of a king and his kingdom, some books emphasize history over doctrine. Acts is one such book. Romans and Galatians are examples of doctrinal books to the church. Wow. Then you got the church age and uh, the Pauline epistles, 13 books, Romans through Philemon. And they cover the writings of the Apostle Paul as presented to the body of Christ, the church. Paul's name is uh, is the first word in each of these uh, epistles. Church age doctrine comes predominantly, not exclusively, from these 13 epistles. You just got to watch if you find a verse somewhere else. That conflicts with that Pauline epistle. Stick with your spokesman. The safest thing I can tell you is stick stick with your spokesman. Who was the the spokesman under the law? Moses. He was the spokesman. God stood by him. 
God's spokesman. Moses was not your spokesman. The apostle Paul was. Then you got the tribulation through the millennium. You got nine books there. Hebrews through Revelation. And they cover uh, future events. Including the. uh, Back in the day some called it the readiness period. Looking for the imminent return of, of Jesus Christ. See, the, the church age is just a small parenthetical. That, that book, is, uh, the Bible, is mostly about the Jew. Because as soon as the church is caught up again today, everything uh, concentrates back on the Jew. Uh, the second coming, the millennium, the great white throne judgment, eternity. And uh, because all these books cover a time following the cross of Christ, some of these books contain doctrine similar to to the church age and, and it may be profitable for you spiritually and apply it spiritually I, I preach on that, that, that verse about God spewing you out of his mouth I said the church got to the point where it just made God want to throw up made him sick that will preach it will help you spiritually but in the context giving the sense of it has nothing to do with the church Behold, I stand at the door and knock. We'll say that in a lot of invitations. The Lord said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Actually, that's the Lord outside the church in the tribulation trying to get in. They won't let him in. Not talking to you and me. But it preaches. Well, the preacher said... <laughs> one, one time knowledge of that book can, can, can infuse a lot of great preaching <laughs> but you can preach, preach on, on verses and they'll preach and it'll help you spiritually but if you try to apply some of that doctrinally you're down the wrong road as brother Stewart said alright now you ever wonder why the churches, so many churches disagree on many of the major doctrines. Man, there's disagreement, disagreement, disagreement. Yet most of these churches, most of all, the churches that disagree will use the Bible to prove their doctrinal beliefs. All right? Uh, and, and you know how they do that? By taking a verse out of context and not rightly dividing the word of truth. They'll say a person gets to heaven based on works, and they go to Luke 18, 18. I thought you said that was in, in, in Matthew. It's in Luke. Luke 18, 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, Why callest thou me good? None is good, save one that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. This, well, it is in Matthew too, but here here it is again, the other account. Do not steal, do not bear false witness on it. And the fellow says, all these have I kept from my youth up. And they'll use that passage because the Lord said it and try to apply it to the church. But the Lord's talking to the nation of Israel. The lost sheep of the house of Israel. Oh. Uh, salvation by grace. We read that in Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. And one man will hold, hold to Luke and say, well, you've got to keep the commandments. You've got to live it. And then another place in Ephesians, which is a church epistle, it says that Jesus Christ lived it for you. All you have to do is believe in that and trust in that. This is the work of God, that you believe on him whom he has sent. So that's, that's one of the main reasons you have so many different denominations from not dividing not rightly dividing well the, the Bible says the Lord said all that thou hast given me I have kept and none of them is lost except the, the son of Paul said I am persuaded I, I know in whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day 
Then the fellow go over and read Hebrews 6, 4. It says, For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, tasted the good word of God and the power of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again into repentance. Seeing they crucified of themselves the Son of God and put him to an open shame. That's, that's, that's going to make you think that you can lose it. You are not a Hebrew. Ephesians 4.30 says, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Well, you'll read Acts 2.38. A fellow used this uh, for his doctrine on salvation. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gifts of the Holy Ghost. So you've got to be baptized. It's called baptismal regeneration. And that you're not put into the body of Christ until you're baptized. You notice where that's at? That's an Acts, early Acts. You know who Peter was speaking to? Acts 2.36 Therefore let all the house of Israel know assuredly that God hath made the same Jesus whom he crucified both Lord and Christ. Now when they heard this, all the house of Israel, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostles, verse 37, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Now that we've crucified our Messiah, the whole house of Israel, what shall we do? And Peter, speaking to the whole house of Israel, says, Repent and be baptized for the remission of sins in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. See? Lord said, This is the work of God that you believe on him whom he hath sent. You remember when the Lord got baptized, he said, Thus it fulfill us, and thus it behoove us to fulfill all righteousness. Lord said, It's a work of righteousness. Isn't that what he said? It behooves us to fulfill all righteousness when he got baptized. Then Titus says, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saves us. Duh. You'll learn so much and get so settled and secure in your Bible knowledge when you learn to rightly divide the word of truth. Colossians 2, 11 and 12. Baptism as a picture of what occurred the moment you trusted Christ. Colossians 2, 11, In whom also ye are circumcised with a circumcision made without hands and putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. The Bible says, And were baptized in like figure. It, fig, it's a figure of what occurred the moment you trusted Christ. The death. You're identifying with the death the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And they read from the book of the law distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to have understanding. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you learn to do that, you'll learn a lot of Bible. Don't be mad at those who have got some of the things wrong. If they're over in Matthew when they should be in, in, in Ephesians or over in Hebrews when they should be somewhere else, pray for them, love them. If they've trusted Christ, they're going to heaven. If they got that part right, everything else after that's just a matter of serving God, trying to, uh, to show yourself approved to God by studying and, and getting it right. To bring glory to His name. I'm done. Everyone stand up tonight. You heard the equation. Want to go to heaven, you trust Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. My, my, my. Have you done that? If you've done that, that's what gets you to heaven. Jesus Christ gets you to heaven. Nothing that you've done gets you to heaven except believing what he did and embracing it. 
appropriating it, believing on him. I think this mic has got something weird going on with it, Dennis. Trust him. The altar's open tonight. If you've got a burden on your heart, won't you come? For whatever reason.